And with that, we bid you aloha from the Sports Pavilion on the campus of the University of Minnesota in Minneapolis. The whole Intel FCU starting lineup scrolling at the bottom of your screen. McKenna Granado, Nikki Taylor, Emma Smith among the starting rotation for Hawaii. Natasha Burns, Emily Maglio, Nourinho Sia at setter, and Savannah Kahakai at libero for the Rainbow Wahine coming off of a far too dramatic five-set victory over USC last night. Minnesota, they swept past North Dakota first round. Their starters, Elisa Gaynor. Sarah Wilhite is the Big Ten Conference Player of the Year. Molly Lohman, also one of the attackers. Paige Tapp and twin sister Hannah Tapp. They are a force in the middle. Samantha Seliger Swenson is the Big Ten Setter of the Year to add to the list of accolades for this Golden Gopher team. And Dalian Lees Rosado is the libero. Head coach for Hawaii in his 42nd season, Dave Shoji, making the NCAA tournament for the 24th straight year, 35th overall. They only missed one time, and that was in 1992. Head coach on the other side for the Golden Gophers, it is Hugh McCutcheon in his fifth season. After last night's win over North Dakota in this building, he is now 4-0 in his first rounds as head coach uh, for Minnesota. The 2015 AVCA National and Big Ten Conference Coach of the Year, Chris. Dave showed he's got his hands full as far as coaching goes. He's running up against one of the best on the planet in Hugh McCutcheon. So Kanoa Leahy, Chris McLaughlin here courtside. They are expecting a packed house capacity of about 5,500 here in the PAV. Well, we have a chance, let's take a look at the Kaiser Permanente keys to the match. Chris, take it away. I thought you'd like this first one, Kanoa. It's uh, go for it. Very Get good. It? Very well done. The Hawaii's especially got to do that from the service line where Taylor, Nikki Taylor, and Eosia and Higgins have got to bring the, their jump serves and disrupt. At Minnesota, it's all five cylinders. They're, they've got a pretty balanced attack with five hitters that all hit over two kills per set, led by Will Height, who kills over four times a game. She was the, as you said, the Big Ten Player of the Year. So Hawaii, as you said, Dave Shoji will have their hands full here against a Minnesota team that is the number two overall seed in this NCAA tournament behind the top seed Nebraska defending national champ. But Minnesota is tops in the latest AVCA national ranking. So it is Hawaii ranked 12th going up against the top ranked team in all the land. I like Hawaii playing Minnesota early rather than playing them like they did in the regional final. I, I like seeing them play them in the, uh, the sub-regional final where maybe they can catch them early, maybe catch a bad, bad night. Uh, and, and Hawaii's playing their best volleyball this time of year. They had a little laps last night in games three and four, but overall, you know, they're playing some great volleyball, winning 17 of the last 18, 11 in a row. You know, so I, I like their chances. Obviously a lot at stake for Hawaii, but a lot at stake for Minnesota. No predetermined regional sites this year, so Minnesota could, if they move on, host all the way through to the Final Four. We take a look at the Minnesota bracket, the lower right portion. Missouri getting past Purdue. That's the uh, latest that we have. Baylor to take on UCLA after Baylor pulled off a pretty interesting upset, huh, Chris? Yeah, that was huge. Baylor uh, winning that one and, and now going up against a UCLA. That should be a, a, quite a battle down there at Pauley Pavilion. Of course, North Carolina, Coastal Carolina, Battle of the Carolinas there, top portion of that bracket. And we will watch Hawaii and Minnesota here in a minute. Upper right portion of the same bracket. Third seed, Wisconsin, getting past Washington State and on to the Sweet 16. Ohio State getting ready for number 14, Kansas State. 11 seed, Florida, taking on Florida State and Boise State to go up against the six seed, Stanford. Two interesting things there. Kansas State, a team that Hawaii played earlier on. And I think if Hawaii had been completely healthy, they would have beat Kansas State that night in Honolulu. And the uh, the Florida-Florida State one, really interesting interstate rivalry. And how about Boise State, a former WAC opponent? so many years, and they were the cellar dwellers, the bottom feeders, and they just could not get out of the cellar. And all of a sudden, they get into their first NCAA championship, and they move on last night. Now they're playing Stanford. All right, let's take a look at the upper left portion, same side of the bracket there. The top overall seed, Nebraska. They will take on TCU. Pittsburgh getting ready to get on the floor against 16 seed Penn State. Still a surprise for many that Penn State was one of the 16 seeded teams in the tournament, having had nine regular season losses. Nine seed Michigan State and Arizona and Kentucky and eight seed and always tough Washington. Also set to be played. Exactly. I think those all should follow the chalk. 
All right, lower left quadrant. This is what we have here. Creighton, what about the story that is Creighton getting past five seed Kansas? Certainly the upset so far of the tournament. We have 12 seed Michigan moving past Oregon. BYU and UNLV set to do battle and SMU and four seed Texas. Well, how about Creighton beating Kansas? Kansas, the big 12 conference champion and Creighton beats them. Kansas beat them earlier this year in five. So that Creighton victory, quite the uh, quite the great upset. BYU UNLV a rivalry there. Those are two schools not too far apart. And the SMU Texas, that should be a good one. SMU getting past uh, Texas A&M. So they continue to do the introductions here before a packed house at the PAV, the sports pavilion which has housed so many memorable moments for this Minnesota women's volleyball program, but a host of other sports as well. And let's just get you ready because this crowd is as active as you will see in all of college volleyball. I would totally agree. They're filing in like an hour ahead of time wearing all sorts of gear. The, uh, the the frat boys, I think, have dressed up tonight in some course sort of Halloween uniforms and gear. And uh, this, the crowd, the crowd, no matter how old or young you are, they they know all the cheers. Yeah. So they're they're a coordinated effort to uh, give the opposing team as much a uh, hard time as they can. Yeah. Well, what you will hear after Minnesota points is the crowd in unison shouting "Point U," referring to the University of Minnesota as the U. And so that is something to behold, certainly. And so Hawaii, which obviously has played a bunch of matches on the road, but this is kind of a different level of road match. It isn't a hostile crowd, as we would describe it. It is just an extremely vocal and very united crowd. Yeah, it's going to be as... Uh, I, I think that Hawaii's going to handle that well, though. They're used to a lot of, you know, arena noise. This is nothing new for them to see a full house like this. They do it all the time back in Honolulu. So Minnesota coming in 26 and 4 overall. They finished the Big 10 Conference 17 and 3 in place in that league. Hawaii 23 and 5 overall. They of course won the Big West Conference with a 15 and 1 record. Both teams have won 11 straight matches. Of course Minnesota among those 11 straight multiple nationally ranked teams. And over an eight day period, Minnesota had to win four five gamers just recently. So Samantha Seliger Swenson, the setter, sends it over and we're playing volleyball here in the second round of the NCAA tournament. McKenna Granado getting the first crack, it's dug up. And a little pinball action on Hawaii's side, but they're unable to return the first offering from Sarah Wilhite, a 6'1 senior from Eden Prairie, Minnesota, as we mentioned, the Big Ten Conference play the year second straight season that Minnesota has sported the conference's player of the year last year Dolly Santana was the conference player of the year already they're picking on McKenna Granado she said two passes that were not very good beyond the 10 foot line only place that you'll see a could set was back to Granado on the outside where she faces two huge blockers yeah it was Paige Tapp and Molly Lohman shutting the door here and it is very quickly two serving zero for the Golden Gophers and Granado with a bad first touch has to swing from off the net. Easy pickings there on the dig by Dalian Liz Rosado. Will Height is blocked back. Now the back set goes to Paige Tap off the block. You'll see of the dig. So a bump set from Savannah Kahakai to Granado. She's blocked. Emma Smith keeps it alive. Granado again finally gets the point for Hawaii off the block and into the pin. Great cover by Emma Smith that time. That came quickly off the block and finally, finally Hawaii rotates. This is a rematch of last year's matchup Hawaii and Minnesota in the Elite Eight round in Des Moines, Iowa. That was the regional final there. As Kahakai sets up, Nikki Taylor goes high hands. Golden Gophers now in transition. Will Height is blocked. And a free ball coming here for Hawaii. Noreen see a middle to Emily Maglio. What a match she had last night against USC. Now Will Height has to just touch it over. Falls to the floor, and they are blowing this play dead as Nikki Taylor is rolling up on the hardwood. And she is grabbing at the lower left leg, it appears, and she seems to be in pain. And this is about as bad and horrific an image 
as Hawaii fans could have imagined here in the early goings of this match. Let's check out the, the play and the replay here. See, watch for Nikki's left ankle as she comes down. She comes down, ooh, on the, the other player on the other side of the net. Paige Tap came under just a little bit, and Nick, Nikki uh, landed on her shoe. Yeah, that was actually Sarah Wilhite just Those left Wilhite? handing it over, yeah. and you see her left shoe actually landed on that middle line. And it was far over enough for Nikki Taylor's foot to sort of catch a piece of it, thus the rolled ankle. And Dave Shoji talking to his star player, Nikki Taylor, the two-time Big West Conference Player of the Year, second-team All-American last season. And she was the go-to force for Hawaii when they needed it most against USC last night. 23 kills, hit 258 on 62 attempts. And look at the blank stares from the collection of Hawaii flan, uh, fans that are here in the path. And this place is respectfully quiet. Yeah. Uh, you see how fast Nikki's breathing. She's a lot of anxiety going on right now. The last thing she wanted to do was be in this match, that's for sure. She's had enough injuries to go around. She's had both elbows. She's had knees, she had shoulder. And all of a sudden, it looks like they're, they're really treating this seriously. Yeah when they're having her stay down for this long. Yeah, they are bringing out what appears to be the air cast, and this her doesn't her look father, good. father, Graham, right there, I think texting the nearest ankle surgeon or, <laughs> or trying to find help, some help somewhere. Yeah, this is the way they're treating it, as you pointed out, Chris, they are treating it with extreme seriousness. We are very on here in the second round match Hawaii and Minnesota Golden Gophers up 2-1 when Nikki Taylor went down the play was called dead and so now she is receiving treatment and I mean with the crowd with the circumstance now you throw a situation like this into the lap of Dave Shoji and this Rainbow Wahine team all the more difficult to try to cope with having to go up against the number one team in the country across the net. Yeah, exactly. What a challenge. But if any team could do it, Hawaii is deep. You know, they have other players to, uh, you know, to back up Nikki. Certainly not uh, maybe with the productive numbers that Nikki's put up this year. But uh, knowing Dave showed you, he's going to find some way to put a mishmash lineup out there and make things happen. We will take a break here, and we'll be back. They are continuing to treat Nikki Taylor here at the PAV. So this was moments ago, Nikki Taylor being helped off the floor by a couple of teammates, Annie Mitchum and Casey Castillo. They put the air cast on that lower left leg, and she leaves the match. Nikki Taylor, the Big West Conference Player of the Year, and what was certainly a scene to behold, we saw this entire arena standing and applauding Nikki Taylor, a very obviously tuned in fan base here they knew just what Nikki Taylor was and what she meant for and now it is Kendra Kelsch the junior from Huntington Beach California onto the floor rewind back to the beginning of the season when Nikki Taylor was out for the first three matches and Kendra Kelsch was her de facto replacement remember she is a setter by trade but she played that opposite position and tried as best she could to lock down the fort in the absence of Nikki Taylor. And she really did a good job, and I've watched Nikki plays Nikki's position on the other side of the court, and, and uh, she's really been playing, I think, her best. Uh, she can Welcome back as you take a look at Hugh McCutcheon, fifth-year head coach for Minnesota, and right now his Golden Gophers up 8-3, and they're hitting for a high percentage, Chris. 444 to Hawaii's 083. Marine Yosia with the slide set to Maglio. That goes off the block. Pass tight to the net, but they're still able to make it work. Samantha Seliger Swenson had to avoid contact with the twine, was still able to successfully set up her middle of So here is Paige Tapp serving for Minnesota. 
High and away, the set goes to Granado through the block and down. That ends a 6-0 Golden Gopher run. We apologize for some technical difficulties. If you are just joining us, round two of the NCAA tournament in Minneapolis. Hawaii 12th in the country, but unseeded in the tournament, going up against the number two overall seed in the NCAA tourney, but the number one ranked team in the ABCA poll, Minnesota. And now doing so without the services of Nikki Taylor as the dink by Hart is returned. And we got a whistle, and it's going to be a net violation against Hawaii, so a point for Minnesota. Nikki Taylor going down three points into this opening set with an apparent lower leg injury. They put an air cast on her. They assisted her off the floor. She is now back somewhere off the playing surface. And so we are awaiting word, if any, uh, on the seriousness of the injury. But it was certainly treated as though it was extremely serious. And talk about a punch to the gut that this team, Hawaii, has to endure. As you take a look at Annie Mitchum now onto the floor for the first time tonight. Overpass. Hawaii able to keep it alive, though. Mitchum gets her first swing, goes off the block and down. If there is one silver lining to the fact that Nikki Taylor is not available, it is that Annie Mitchum is. Yeah, and, and she's going to really need a big night now that Annie, now that, that Taylor went down. Annie Mitchum's really going to need to step it up, as will Kendra Kelch. Here's Hart over the block, dug up by Emily Maglio. You'll see a bump set across court. And Mitchum just free passes it over. Here's Hart, the touch. Pancake save, Claire Marie Anderson. Mitchum the swing off the block and down. Those are the kind of big plays that Hawaii's going to need to make time and time again. Rally after rally. Great pancake by Claire Marie Anderson. Grew up her first 10 years on Molokai, you know. And now having to play a lot more than she anticipated here in the match. The slide goes to Hannah Tap off the block. Maglio pass too tight to the net, but she saves the touch over by Hart. Mitchum the swing, caught it fat. It sails long, no touch. And it's a point for Minnesota. Hawaii trying to hang tough here in the opening set. They have been dealt a very difficult hand. Just in terms of seeding and pairing here in this tournament, now throw on top of that the injury to Nikki Taylor. But there is no looking back now, right? Exactly. We've got to play with the hand they've been dealt. Middle set. That's Natasha Burns. She's blocked. Mitchum saves it. So Burns sets up Mitchum. An unorthodox jump. Wasn't able to get it done. That time, the slide does get it done. Hannah Tapp with the monster kill. Third on the team with 2.72 kills per set. Last year against Hawaii, 15 kills, no errors, and 25 tries. She had a huge game in that regional final. Here's Mitchum, winds up, goes hard angle, one hand saved by Wilhite, but they're gonna call a net violation against Hawaii. And so it's another point for Minnesota, and it is 13 serving six here in the opening stanza. And Alyssa Gaynor, converted defensive specialist from the outside hitter position with the serve. Mitchum blocked the roof. And they are just waiting for her, knowing that there aren't that many other options out there. And they'll be going back to the right on for Nikki Taylor. 14-6, Minnesota in the first. Rainbow Wahine Volleyball on OC Sports is sponsored by Bank of Hawaii. Kaiser Permanente and Island Air. And we welcome you back to the PAV here on the campus of the University of Minnesota. It is the Golden Gophers up 14-6 in the opening set. Annie Mitchum able to soft touch it over for the Hawaii point out of the Dave Shoji signaled timeout. And Hawaii back into positive numbers. They were flatlining it before that Annie Mitchum attempt. You see her numbers on the season, 2.85 kills per set. Meantime, Minnesota hitting 330, 353, no hitting errors. Weapons, perhaps not someone of the ilk of Kalia Lanier like we saw last night for USC, but they have so many balanced weapons out there on the floor. High school Americans, all big tenors, solid at every position. Mitchum, the first touch, gets the set from off the net, dug up 
by Rosado. Slide, this is the other tap sister, Paige Tap. And she taps the floor for another Minnesota point. If it's not one tap, it's the other. Again, last night they had identical yeah. hitting numbers. Yeah, they both had eight kills and hit 412 <laughs> in that win over North Dakota. I mean, so, they're, taking that twins. they're taking that twin thing very seriously. A 6-1 run here for the Golden Gophers. Here's Kendra Kelsch from the outside block. Kept alive by Kahakai. Mitchum off one leg is blocked. Touches it over. Golden Gophers able to keep it alive. Will Hype from off the net. Grazes the block. So Kahakai sets up Mitchum. Cross court, diving one hand save attempt for not, but a good effort by Katie Shaw, the 5'8 senior from Richland, Michigan. And Annie Mitchum, another kill. Annie Mitchum just wristing this one across court, avoiding that block and avoiding a Smith, the Seliger Smith in there on the big. But sends the serve long, gives a freebie over to the Golden Gophers. Annie Mitchum, the 6'3 senior from Friendswood, Texas. Great write-up about her in the Honolulu Star Advertiser the other day. All the athletic stuff has come naturally. It's been the student part of the student-athlete dynamic that has sometimes required a little bit of effort. Exactly. As Burns so here's is able Dave to shows you wrinkle right now that's going on. Dave shows you left Annie Mitchum in to uh, play all the way across the back row. My guess is he wants some backcourt attacking presence just as uh, Nikki Taylor went off her up. We'll see if we'll see if Annie Mitchum gets set in the back row. Nine serving 17. Step out, that's Paige Tap. Looked like someone got caught in the twine. No call. Here's Will Height dug up by Yosia to no avail. Another kill for Will Height. That's number two for her on four attempts. So far error free. And it is Will Height back to serve. Yeah, you look at their attackers, two, 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 one, one. Offense spread out so far. Eight kills, no errors for Minnesota. Second on the team in aces is Will Height. Slide goes to Mags. And she shows off a little power there on the step out. Good pass up that time by Granado. Nice little back set, tight slide by Maglio. Remember, it was Minnesota that bounced Hawaii from the tournament last year in the Elite Eight. Bump set, here's Granado. Threw the block and down. And I would say after Nikki's injury, it took about 10 points to get organized. Hence the, the deficit now of seven points right now. Hawaii just trying to get close, get some rhythm, and get ready for game two. Step out, and that's put down off of one leg by Paige Tapp. Give us a sense of what the environment is like on that Hawaii bench right now with all of the scrambling and substitutions they're doing. I, mean, I would say it's solemn, but they've got to be focused and paying attention as to which role they're going to play. Because Dave showed he's going to start pulling some cards out and having to do some, mix some things around, which he's really, I think, is, a, is the thing that he does best. So we'll see. He's going to be really tested here over the rest of this match. Annie Mitchum on the pipe set. I told you she'd the, get set in the back row. <laughs> she brought the heat, but the signal was out. Annie didn't like the call. It's, well, we can't see the finish there in that replay, but Annie Mitchum thought it was in. Here's Granado from off the net. And sort of tightrope walks the twine. Now Granado a second crack at it. Dug up by Will Height. Outside, here's Hart. Soft shot dug up by Kahakai. Now Mitchum from the back row again. Tried to go wrist away and missed it wide. And he just trying a little bit too hard to avoid the block in those last two swings. And you talked about what the players may be experiencing on the Hawaii bench. What, what is it like for the coaches right now? They're scrambling, I'll tell you, they're scrambling. There'll be a, there'll be a lot of discussion in between sets as to who to start, who's going to play where, how we're going to make up for missing Taylor. And that hit misses wide from Hannah Tapp. The first error of the hitting error of the night for Minnesota. Took 20, took, uh, let's see, 32 points before they made an error. Yeah, they, uh, that was their 26th attempt, 10 kills as a team, and just that one error, as you pointed out. And an ace dealt out the deck here by McKenna Granado. 
When we talk about the importance of Annie Mitchum having to bear a greater burden now without Nikki Taylor. Certainly Emily Maglio. But what about McKenna Granado, Chris? Same thing. She's going to have to pick up the load with, not only from behind the service line, but her passing as well. What a great serve that time. I think just dove. Hart, though, goes hard angle dug up by Mitchum. Kahakai, bump set to Annie from off the net. That one popped up in the air by Seliger Swenson. So the back bump set goes to Hart, and she's able to plug it through. No, no Hawaii think, got I the block Mag up. Magler got the block. Yeah, Mags alongside Yosia was able to send it back. That's, so that, another, that's another part of Hawaii's game that's got to be stepped up is their, their block, and they've got to really start tuning in, zoning in on the Minnesota attackers. Slow them down a little bit. Out serve, though, and that ends a 3-0 Hawaii run. Just trying to tread water here in the first set as Katie Shaw gets ready to serve here for the Golden Gophers. And she sends it out. A rare error. Shaw, in fact, has the least amount of service errors on the team. Yeah, Hugh McCutcheon has this philosophy here. Let's be you know, the least error kind of a team. We're not going to make hitting errors. We're not going to make serving errors. Let's let our defense and our block win it. When we get good sets and split blocks, then we'll go hammer away. Well, they were second in the Big Ten as a team in blocks, so you can understand the thinking there. But the blocks for Hawaii starting to surface as you have Noreen Yosia getting her paws on that one, a 5-1 rainbow run. So Maglio to serve, 16 serving 12. Hawaii showing some life here. Oh, but what a play by Samantha Seliger Swenson, the Big Ten setter of the year, just a sophomore, Chris. And she pulled that one up from under her sleeve at just the right time. You can tell she's a coach's daughter. Her mom, Vicky, was her high school coach. Her dad, Eric, played uh, football at North Dakota. She's got those athletic genes going. She's got the high volleyball IQ. Overpass by Hawaii, and she does it again. The IQ on display once more for Seliger Swenson. She was the Big Ten Freshman of the Year last year, and we got some booze here. What was the ultimate ruling there on that call? As they've given the point to Hawaii. Oh, I think they, they called uh, Seliger Swenson on a throw, maybe. She held on to the ball too long. It was like a slam dunk. Will height. That was a slam dunk. And Minnesota within one of claiming this opening set. Yeah, it was an attacking error officially in the scorebook for Samantha Seliger Swenson. But amid the liveliness of the celebration of this crowd, we missed the call. Here's the serve. And Dalian Lees ends it in the first for the Golden Gophers. They take it 25-17, but Hawaii feeling much more shell-shocked than just what happened on the scoreboard, losing their top hitter for the rest of the match, perhaps. Rainbow Wahine Volleyball on OC Sports is sponsored by Straw and Hawaii Honda Dealers. Well, bravo to the fans here at the Sports Pavilion at Minnesota. They applauded once again as Nikki Taylor on crutches makes her way out from the locker room area and to the Hawaii bench. So we can confirm now that she will sit out, obviously, the entirety of the match. We can't confirm, though, specifically what the injury is at this point, but Nikki Taylor now can only support her team along that bench as you see she is certainly disappointed, uncomfortable for sure, but now receiving some high fives and, and support from her teammates obviously for what she has done here. If this is Hawaii's final match, if they do not win this game, then it would mean the symbolic end of one of the great careers in Rainbow Wahine history. Absolutely, and watch for her on the bench. I, I think we're going to see her get very vocal on the bench. She's going to support her teammates uh, like no other teammate 
trying to exhort them on to victory. And there, Dave Shoji, you know, this is one of the things I think he does best is game adjustments. Pushing all the right buttons, putting in the right players, calling the right timeouts. So we'll see if he can uh, be the master magician once again. For the latest information on UH Athletics, go to hawaiiathletics.com for UH news, tickets, videos, and more. Also visit UH's Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube sites to follow your favorite teams and get current fan promotions. So you obviously have to feel for Nikki Taylor and what she is experiencing now, but there still is a high stakes match to be played and Hawaii trailing one set to none, losing the first 25-17. Page tap is dug up, tight to the net. You'll see a battle's will height. Will Height now gets a swing out of it, off the block. And a net violation called against Minnesota, so count that one as a roof for the Rainbow Wahine, and they strike first here in the second. Much different start than the first set, in case you're just joining us. Hawaii started out uh, pretty shakily in the first three points, and then Nikki Taylor got hurt, and things went down from there. In fact, this is the first lead for Hawaii so far in this match. Will Height dug up by Emma Smith. Now Mitchum from the outside. Golden Gophers in transition. Will Height diving save in the back row by Kahakai. Mitchum a second time. Diving save right back at you by Shaw. And we got a good rally here. Mag's trying to end it, and she does. That was a well-played point by the University of Hawaii. There's a great dig by Kahakai, giving up her body once again. And how about the step out to Maglio? She just rips it down the line. And Hawaii showing signs of life. Yeah, Maglio now three kills on five swings. Kahakai tried to react to another dump shot by Samantha Seliger Swens, and that time two handed it over to avoid any kind of illegal hit call. And gets the first point of this second set for Minnesota. But Emily Maglio yet to commit a hitting error in Minneapolis. Right, three kills, no errors, five tries, hitting 600 tonight. Here's Mitch, a big wind up. Block got a good piece of it, though. Back bump set to Will Height. The dink played off the net by Yosia, and she one hands it over but misses the court wide. So a point for the Golden Gophers, and we're not at a two here in the second. It's all started out by a good serve by Samantha Seliger Swenson. Irene Yosia, the setter for Hawaii, just a freshman, but came into this match 56 assists away from reaching the 1,000 mark in her first year. Mitchum is dug up by Rosado, right side, that's Page Tap. You know, a couple weeks ago against Wisconsin, you know, Hannah Tap's been carrying a lot of the load this year and putting up bigger numbers. That's why she got the, the All Big Ten honors, but a couple weeks ago, Page Tap had 21 kills against Wisconsin, it's 600. Maglio blocked. Net violation against Minnesota, though, and Hawaii gets the point. So going back and forth here. Tit for tat in the early portion of this second set. And Emily Maglio will serve. Into the net it goes. And last year, these two teams met up in the regional final in Des Moines, and Minnesota won in four. Dolly Santana, last year's Big Ten Conference Player of the Year, had 26 kills and 12 digs in a double-double effort in that Golden Gopher win. Also hit 438 in that match. Here's Will Height, this year's Big Ten Conference Player of the Year, doing it on the pipe set. Well, that was one impressive swing by Will Height showing why she was the Big Ten's best player. See the 17 kills last night against North Dakota. 5-1 run here for Minnesota. And Natasha Burns gets the side and the point back for Hawaii. Marine Yosia will serve. the line it goes. First touch by Hart is a good one. Middle set goes to Lohman and she puts it down. All Big Ten honorable mention. She had six blocks in that regional final matchup with Hawaii last year doing it offensively on that sequence. 
one of the things that, that uh, Hawaii, I think, is going to miss most from Nikki Taylor's absence is her serve. Kendra Kelsch flat-footed, slaps it over. Roman in the middle. Wants to get an Aaron Hawaii pass, forced a free ball, basically, for Minnesota, and they end up connecting in the middle. Running a fast play. They're known to run a pretty quick offense. Loman, perfect so far. Four kills on four swings. Natasha Burns, though, right back at you. Six, Natasha Burns. That was, you mentioned the Nikki Taylor serving aspect to her game and the value of that for this team. One of the best scoring servers in all the country. And that was certainly an area that Hawaii felt like they had to exploit to give themselves a legitimate shot here against Minnesota. So you're right, that's a huge loss. And Molly Lohman right now, unstoppable. Five kills, five swings. She now goes to the bench and is back to serve is Katie Shaw. Crowd quiets, Shaw sends it down the line. Two-handed in the air by Granado. Middle set to Burns, dug up by Will Height. Outside set, this is Hart, oh boy. She put a hurting on that one. Alexis Hart, just a freshman. She's the baby on this starting lineup. This is a very experienced team, six seniors on this squad, but there is the rookie who broke into the starting lineup and she has played well. All Big Ten freshman team. You can see some of the hops. She was a long jumper and high jumper. State champion level in high school. Here's Mitchum from the back row. Saved by Wilhite. She's doing some work on that back line. Now Hart dug up over the net by Mitchum. Mitchum tried to dig up the follow-up by Hannah Tapp, but unable to do so. Those were a couple of shots coming from the Gopher, Golden Gopher side of the net. Dave shows you're going to make a, make a substitution now and give Casey Castillo a chance, which I think might be a good move here just to throw something different at Minnesota. So here comes the serve. You'll see a backside. Kelsch straight down to the floor. Kendra Kelsch, who entered this match with 19 kills on the season, now finding herself as the de facto replacement for the great Nikki Taylor. Yeah, how, how do you replace a go-to with another go-to? Here's Hannah Tapp off the block, diving save Kelsch. Kahakai high and away to Granado off the block. What an effort by Wilhite. Hannah Tapp again. And they are just dropping missiles right now on the Hawaii side. So this is a slide to perfection. Hannah Tapp going up and she just sees the floor, sees the line open up and just drills it. Gainer serving. So Alyssa Gainer now to serve. Middle set is Maglio blocked. Mitchum sets up Granado. Questionable contact there by Mitchum. No whistle. Outside, it's Wilhite through the block. Diving save there by Kahakai and Mitchum. Will send a free ball over the Golden Gopher side. Wilhite quick outside set. And she pounds it down. And Minnesota has Hawaii doubled up here in the second. Timeout, Dave Shoji. Wilhite now with five kills. Welcome back to tonight's Jack Fact, making a Big Ten presence. Yes, the Big Ten Conference garnered eight bids into the 2016 Women's Volleyball Tournament. Six teams received top 16 seeds, including the top three seeds, Nebraska, Minnesota, and Wisconsin. As we join live action here at the PAV, little miscommunication on the Gophers' side. So free chance here for Hawaii. You'll see it goes middle to Maglio. Pinballed around, Will Height will dink it over. Good cover by Granado. Mitchum from the back row, pumps it long. And it's a point for the Golden Gophers. What is Mitchum seeing perhaps here in Minneapolis against USC last night and Minnesota tonight that's a little bit different from what she's experienced previously this season? Well, tonight for sure she's seeing a lot of attacks out of the back row. Dave Shoji's asking her. 
he's asking her to you know to become a Nikki Taylor type of presence in the back row and she's just not used to that she does it in, in practice a lot but not enough to really get her ready for a match like this in, in the second round of the NCAAs and should be noted on the other side of the net more formidable blocks certainly than what she saw on a regular basis in the Big West absolutely it's a big block all the way across the front there are really no small blockers to attack from this Minnesota team that was an all-out attack. That was an all-out assault on that set by Sarah Wilhite. She now has six kills in 357 and showing every bit the part of being the freshly named Big Ten Conference Player of the Year. Here's the slide to Maglio off the block, played by Gaynor. Step out goes to Paige Tapp. Gets it by the diving attempt of Savannah Kahakai. Kahakai, by the way, already 10 digs, and she only needed 16 coming into this match to reach 1,000 career digs, so she is on her way, but working a lot harder than she was hoping to, that's for sure. Dalian Liz Rosado with the serve. Good first touch there by Kahakai. High and away, it's Granado. Up the ladder and down the shoot it goes. She got the touch. Looked from our perspective as though it was close to even hitting the end line, but either way, it's a point for Hawaii. Granado's adjusted well to the big block. She's going high hands every time with a lot of topspin. She's got five kills to lead Hawaii, hitting 167. And she serves. Well, that may have been an out ball. Joust at the net, played by Granado. Chance for Hawaii. Maglio on the slide. Dug up over the twine. Chance again. You'll see a high and away. Mitchum into the deep corner for a kill, and Hawaii cuts the deficit down to six. Hawaii showing some pretty good rhythm in transition. They're going from defense to offense. Nice set by Iosia. And Mitchum just ripping it cross court. Good swing by Annie. Granado going cross court on the serve. Page tap didn't get the full height on the jump, so it was dug up. Mitchum the dink, and Hawaii actually utilizing the touch shot to its benefit. It's usually the other way around. Exactly, and Annie Mitchum, she's been asked to do a lot tonight. She's gonna have to carry a huge load. The six kills already for Mitchum, but she's got six errors to go along with it. She was in the negatives, now flatlining it. Percentage-wise, it's 10 serving 15. Outside, here's Wilhite, the touch shot. And Hawaii is victimized by the dink on cue. Well, you know, they've, they've been playing that wide perimeter defense, especially on Wilhite, who hits the ball so hard. You really get, it's easy to get caught back on your heels. And that's when the smart hitters will throw that tip shot at you and get another kill. Wilhite, who was the ABCA National Player of the Week, the final week of the regular season. Nikki Taylor was given that award the previous week. Good save there by Kahakai. Outside, here's Mitchum, hard angle and in. She was working that in warm-ups. Lindsey Berg was actually in her ear. Lindsey Berg, the assistant coach and former Golden Gopher. And she was working on that wrist away and she busted out right here, Chris. She did, hit right over the off blocker. Good swing. So Maglio serves, 11 serving, 16. Middle set, that's Lohman, sends it long. No touches signaled. And a point for the Rainbow Wahine. They're within four. And finding sense, ways. They're just finding ways. There's smoke and mirrors right now in this 5-1 run. Yeah, sensing that the crowd turns up the heat a little bit. Tap ends that 5-1 run. Well, the Tap sisters, again, putting up almost identical numbers. Five kills each. Now, I think... One of, the, one of the taps has now the sixth kill. But how about the twins just bringing heat time after time? Castillo tried to touch it over. Diving save by Rosado. Page tap. Sends a lightning rod into the back row. Saved by Kahakai. Good second touch effort by Emma Smith. But the Gophers with the advantage. And it's put down by Molly Lohman. That is the balance that we are witnessing here, whether it's one of the Tap sisters, whether it's Sarah Wilhite from the back row or on either pin, or Lohman in the middle, as to why this is a national championship contender. Welcome back. Let's go inside the numbers presented by Heineken. 42. That's the number of winning seasons for Hawaii in 42 years under head coach Dave Shoji. He has never 
coached a team with a losing record at the University of Hawaii, and that becomes the sort of back burner question here as this match rolls along. If Hawaii does not come out victorious tonight, the questions will then turn to, what is the future of Dave Shoji? Oh boy, Alexis Hart, great dig back over the net by Greeley. Step out goes to Page Tap off of Mitchum's hands and out of play for a Minnesota point. Dave has given some hints that he is at least as close to the end as he's ever been, right? That he is m thinking more about the potential of retiring than he has previously. Yeah, I, I would agree with that. Here's Yosia, back row set to Granado, dug up over the net. Good job by Wilhite. Putting in Yeoman's work back there. Mitchum the dink, and it will be a miss hit on Minnesota side. Boy, Hawaii pull out all the stops. Granado hit it on the back row. I think Hawaii's done that in about a month and a half. Serving for the rainbow So Marine Yosia now to serve. She can score from that service line, but it's a stick em pass by Wilhite. And up the elevator goes Alexis Hart. That was just a smash from Alexis Hart. First team Under Armour All-American at Truman High School in Missouri. Mom played basketball at Oklahoma. She's got the goods. Here's Kelsch, smothered by that block on the outside. Loman and Anna Tapp. Solid block there by the Gophers. Nowhere for Kelsch to go. That's a big block as well. 6-3, 6-1. And McKenna Ross now onto the floor for the first time here tonight for the Rainbow Wahine. Dave Shoji, he's trying anything he can here to light a fire. Busting out the spatula was Paige Tapp. Free ball coming for Hawaii. You'll see a backside, Mitchell. Misses wide. There was a touch though, signaled by one of the line judges, and Hawaii gets the point. Nice pancake. Ball kept alive nicely by the Gophers. And it would be Mitchum Mitch getting the kill. Finishes. Right side, that's Loman hitting from the right side position. And this thing is hard about this Minnesota team. They've got three middle blockers. You know, the two taps plus Loman. And they're just, they hit all the middle balls and they hit the pins as well. So Katie Shaw to serve. Minnesota closing in here on this second set. Here's McKenna Ross down the line. Good job there by Daliani Rosado. Real high from the back row. Pinballed around in return. And miscommunication as the Gophers look at one another. It was Shaw and Wilhite letting it drop in between them. I think Eosia gets a bump kill there. <laughs> well, what you'll take anything at this stage. And Savannah Kahakai gets ready to serve. Here's Hannah Tapp. The block was up. Played off the ricochet by Rosado. Tap another crack at it. Good job there by Kahakai. Granado. Was there a touch? No touch. Sails long, point Minnesota. Good swing, I thought. Didn't miss by much with the high hands. Again, that Minnesota block so intimidating. They're always out there on time. Not many holes in that Minnesota block. Gainer with the serve. Renato first touch. Mags in the middle. Does it again. Maglio now five kills on 11 swings. No errors. So here's Emma Smith now to serve. She has seen her time out there on the floor increase here in the latter stages of the season. Good cover by Mitchum. And Hawaii scrambling to get it across. Will hide a second time. 
the block had not even come close to being formed, and Wilhite just gobbled it up for her eighth kill of the match. She's hitting 350, and it's Aloha Ball for the Gophers in set number two. You'll see it just drifted out way too far to the line, gave too much cross court to Wilhite. So Rosado, who hails from Puerto Rico with the serve. Back row set to Mitchum, Rosado the dig. Back row, it goes to Gaynor getting the swing. Good job by Hawaii defensively. Granado extends set two for at least a little longer. McKenna picking up her sixth kill. Mitchum leading the way, though, with a nine kill so far. Maglio with five. Still Aloha ball here for the Gophers. And that's how set two ends. Frustration, disappointment on the side of Hawaii. They will now have to try to dig themselves out from an 0-2 hole against a team that hasn't lost in this building in over two years without the services, once again, of Nikki Taylor. Dave Shoji, got some coaching to do here tonight in round two of the tournament. She watched from the bench in that second stanza. Uh, Scott Robbs asked the question of whether or not even her presence could help to overcome what we have seen from Minnesota. But you did a little uh, arithmetic that uh, might provide a good argument. Well, in each game, Hawaii lost by about eight points. Nikki averages, uh, you know, four kills per set. If you take her four kills and add them on to Hawaii and subtract those four points from Minnesota, it would be 21 all, and we'd still be playing. And it's anybody's contest <laughs> in both of those first two sets. So an uphill battle here, to say the least, for the Rainbow Wahine. As Minnesota serves first to start set three, and an overpass is put down by Molly Lohman, who now has eight kills on the evening, and it's just been clockwork right now for Minnesota. One serving zero. Natasha Burns hits it into the net, and not a good start here for Hawaii. What would you like to see from the Rainbow Wahine here in this second set, even from just an emotional level? Yeah, if they just, they, they've got to, you know, keep on fighting, not give up, uh, do some more unorthodox things like that, what Iosia just did. They've got, to, they've got to sort of get out of their comfort zone, uh, sort of push the edges as far as creativity is concerned. And Dave showed you will, I'm sure, push a few buttons to make things uh, on his side of the net be different than what Minnesota is used to seeing. A step out, that's Page Tap. Popped up in the air by Granado, and then Natasha Burns with the illegal touch. And so it's a point for Minnesota. And if you're any player along that Hawaii bench, be ready because there is a high probability that Dave Shoji at some point will call your number. I agree. I've seen him play 14 players in a heartbeat. High and away. Here's Annie Mitchum. Soft touch that got blocked. Second time, a little harder swing. Again, the block getting a good touch on it, though. And Alexis Hart. Picked up by Yossia. Now Granado goes off the block, covered by Rosado. Will Height from the back row, diving save Emma Smith. And we're just improving it on both sides of the net. But the door is shut once again. Alexis Hart right next to Molly Lohman. And it is 4-1 like that here in the third set. And Casey Castillo checks into the match, replacing Natasha Burns. And Sarah Wilhite will serve middle set this is Mitchum from the middle of course when she was recruited to Hawaii she was a middle hitter but transitioned to the outside pin here this season but able to make it work there from that middle spot exactly those are the kind of funky things I think Hawaii can have to do be a little unorthodox there's Sibley coming in she's going to play on the outside an auto serve it's a good one pass tight to the net and Loman is roofed by Mitchum. That, that adjustment worked. Mitchum got that block. Mitchum's playing on the right side now instead of the left. Sibley's going to be hitting on the left, and Castillo in the middle. So three serving four. 
Granado, hard angle and misses the court wide. And, well, you can't afford to then, on top of everything that is stacked against them, start doing some of the error stuff and self-inflicted stuff. Exactly. Well, after Minnesota pick on Sibley, the freshman, they know what grade she's in. I think they'll figure that out. And they did not go. They go right at Greeley. Good pass by Greeley. Mitchum put a heat on that. And Mitchum gets another kill. That was her 35th attempt of the evening. And that ties her career high, and we still have a whole lot of volleyball to play. It was expected that they would have to go to her, obviously, more frequently here with the absence of Nikki Taylor, but she's already at her career high, which she got against UC Irvine last month. Middle set. Loman dug up over the net, and it's another bump kill for Noreen Yosia. That's two for her tonight. Very alert play. She was in a good position. She was ready, not moving, very steady. Put her arms in the right spot. A 4-1 Hawaii run. Outside set, it's Hart. Just going up over everybody. Got up into the mesosphere on that attempt. So hard for Magdalene to get out there. That set is set so low, and it's, it's such a fast tempo. She's a freshman, so a youth injection for a team that has six seniors, the largest senior class that Minnesota has sported since 2004. Here's Mitchum on the slide. Another different look here for exactly. Hawaii. But it's a, a set she's comfortable with. She's much more comfortable hitting that slide than she is hitting the pipe out of the back row, that's for sure. So a new career high in attempts for Annie Mitchum, 36. She has 12 kills. That's one off of her career high in that category, but another out serve. Looks like she's gonna stay in the back row. Dave Shoji may use her for some back row attacking again, give her another shot. And now Alyssa Gaynor, who has some twin sisters in her family too. Her mom and her aunt are both twins, both played college volleyball as Will Height is able to take advantage of the overpass. There's a lot of that twin sensibility going on on the Minnesota side of the net. On the line, here's Greeley with the pass. Back row set, Mitchum had to readjust her steps. Chance now for the Gophers, it's Hannah Tapp, who just taps it down the line and in. Smart shot, that's the... That's the scouting report on Taps, is that she does, if she get, gets a bad set or one that she doesn't like, she'll go deep corner just like that. How about the match Hannah Tapp had last year against UH in the regional final? 15 kills, 25 attempts, and no errors. Hitting 600, that's huge. And here in this rematch, if you will, Hannah Tapp with five kills on 13 attempts, Hitting a very quotidian 308. And at least she made one error. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Nice of you, Hannah. Three digs, three blocks, having a complete game. Proving to be human. As Emma Smith sends it across. Outside, here's Will Height. Good dig by Smith. Granada winds up, uncoils, and is able to go off the block and out for another Hawaii point. This Rainbow Wahine team, shorthanded is showing a lot of heart and grit right now, Chris. They really are. And this group has not played together as a unit that much. Outside, here's Will Height. Down the line, missed wide. Was there a touch? No touch point, Hawaii, and we're knotted up here in the third. And Will Height shows a little chink in the armor. Her second hitting error in this match, it's nine serving nine. And the serve just trickles over the net by Smith. Will Height off the block. Kahakai there with the dig. Middle set to Mags. Good job there by Rosado to pop it up. Back row set goes to Gaynor. Back over the net it goes. Here's Will Height, the touch down the line where no Rainbow Wahine were. She found the vacancy back there. Oh, and that tempo set to the outside was lightning quick. So difficult for Hawaii's middle blockers to get all the way to the outside and close off that middle attack. 
it's not just last year's postseason meeting that provides the history between these two programs. They've played several times. In fact, Hawaii dominated the series until last year. Hawaii had won the first seven matchups with Minnesota, but the Golden Gophers are taking things to another level here in the modern day. As Paige Tapp once again provides offense with her ninth kill to match her teammate Sarah Wilhite. Paige Tapp, two-time ABC All-American. Again, 21 kills against Wisconsin, number three team in the tournament just a couple of weeks ago. Overpass, easy pickings for Samantha Seliger Swenson. And Minnesota creates some space on the scoreboard again. Timeout, Dave Shoji. Welcome back. You know, last night we talked a lot about Lindsey Berg, assistant coach for Hawaii and her playing career here at Minnesota. And she has all kinds of memorabilia and pictures and framed up on the walls. But Jeff Hall, he hails from the state of Minnesota. In fact, he grew up about a half hour northeast of downtown Minneapolis in Shoreview. Went to Moundsview High School, played for the Mustangs prior to matriculating to play volleyball for Orange Coast Junior College and Park College. And then, of course, on to Pacific, where he turned into a star player. And on and on it went until he found his way to Hawaii. But it was a homecoming of sort for several members of the Hawaii coaching staff. But right now, Jeff Hall and... Does he have bags under his eyes there? This you rainbow know what? He, he had two team. hours sleep last night. I saw him at practice this morning. He was looking at Minnesota tapes all night long. Here's Mitchum. And again, just pushed over by Paige Tapp for her team leading 10th kill, a 5 0 Minnesota run. And they are starting to tighten the grip on this second round match. Already up two sets to none. And trying to close the book. 14 serving nine, here it comes from Rosado. It's an ace, and it's 15-9. That ball moved about a foot and a half. That was wicked. That was a tough serve. By the way, stick around for the Heineken post-game show coming up right after the match as Scott, Lisa, and my partner Chris McLaughlin will break down tonight's match, statistics, get some reaction. Hey, look, there are going to be a lot of questions, certainly a lot of would'ves, could'ves, and should'ves, but questions about the future of this man right here as well, Dave Shoji, after 42 years. I think all Hawaii volleyball fans are going through the phases right now of realizing that this disaster of a night based on how it started for Hawaii could possibly be the final match coached by Dave Shoji. And I don't know how Dave would feel about that, how that would sit with him, but I think Hawaii fans would certainly have a hard time with that being the final taste. Yeah, I, don't, you know, I don't think it is. I think he'll keep on doing as long as he's happy doing what he's doing. Of course, we got a new lineup now in as well. McKenna Ross has come in, she's playing. And Taylor Higgins coming in to set. As you see Nikki Taylor relegated to being a cheerleader, a supporter for her teammates with the lower leg injury. 16 serving 10 as Will Height strikes again. She has 10 kills to match Paige Tapp. Granado had to readjust the steps. Middle goes to Loman. Good job by Emma Smith. She's been impressive here in the latter part of the season. That was a beautiful dig there for Minnesota. Roll shot, Will Height. And this turned into a bit of a tennis match back and forth. Now middle set goes to Castillo. She's blocked. Kept it alive, though, to hand it over the net. It's all improv right now. Will Height says improvise that. Yeah. See, once again, Will Height getting a one-on-one -on -one situation out there. On the outside, Castillo jumping in the middle because she's worried about the attack uh, of Molly Lohman. And that leaves Will Hyde alone with only one blocker. Taylor Higgins sets up Castillo in the middle. The ball floated above the net, allowing Will Hyde to oh so gently place it down to the hardwood. It is 18-10 Minnesota. Timeout Dave Shoji. Time ticking on the Rainbow Wahine. Here's how it works, presented by Central Pacific Bank. Chris. Let's take a look at uh, Casey Castillo here in the middle for Hawaii. She's going to get, she's going to go up to block. 
and leave Sarah Wilhite on, on the outside all alone. And that's how fast that offense is of Minnesota's. And how much teams have to respect the attack in the middle, whether it's Loman or one of the Tap sisters. And that's why Castillo went up on Loman because she's a threat in the middle. Loma now with nine kills. Well, we gave Hawaii a lot of credit, deservedly so, for fighting back to even things up in this third set, 9-9. Nine, nine. Since that point, though, with that kill by Granado, it is a 10-2 run for Minnesota, hence the 19-11 lead. And it is Noreen Yosia coming in to serve. Boy, could Hawaii use one of her devastating service runs. Like about a nine-point run would be good? That would be good. Nine aces would be lovely right now. <laughs> good pass by Rosado. Outside set, though, a little mistimed, so Hawaii with the advantage. Here's Granado. Double block up, goes through the double block, and down Hawaii point. Granado goes up. Nice little close, step close there to gather herself on a set that was a little bit wide for her. She just finds the hole in the block and gets the 12 point. Little set moment right there was Kahakai at her cover. Granado from off the net. Rosado picks it up. Delay back row set, and that's Gaynor dug up. A little back and forth action, so you'll see it goes to Granado. That block getting a piece of just about everything Hawaii has to offer. Mitchum is blocked. Bump set from Castillo to Granado. And finally penetrates that wall up front for Minnesota and gets another point for Hawaii. And McKenna Granado goes into double figures. Look at this bump set by Castillo. A perfect one. Granado just unloads. She's in double figures. Ten kills for McKenna on 35 attacks. Wilhite sends it across. You'll see a high noise. Here's Granado. Does it again. Hawaii put on a little mini run here. Refusing to say die. Scrappy, feisty, battling to the end. And that is signature for a Dave Shoji coach squad trying to stay alive in Minneapolis. Timeout, Minnesota. Take a look at Savannah Kahakai right here in the back row. She picks up her 1,000th dig of her career on that last play. And there she is again. Perfect pass. And now Hawaii trying to put on more of this little mini run that forced Minnesota to call a timeout. Yeah, Kahakai needed 16 coming into the match to reach 1,000. That was number 16 right there, but she couldn't come up with 1,001 as Emma Smith and Kahakai were trying to fight over that save. So 20 serving 14. Granado had kills on four straight Hawaii points prior to that turnaround there by Minnesota out of the break. Here's Mitchum in the middle. Another crack at it. And second time was a charm for Annie. Notice how comfortable Annie Mitchum is in the middle. I mean, she, she's been great on the left, but when she goes back to the middle, it's like going back home again. She'll get that high two set in the middle and just do all sorts of things with it. Mitchum now with 13 kills on 41 attempts. He matches her career high in kill output, already above the career high in attempts. Off speeder by Hart. Good job playing it off the net by Mitchum. Granada from the back row is dug up. Hart tried to find the open space down the line, but we got a violation against Hawaii. Someone got caught in the net, and it was the newly inserted Kirsten Sibley, 6'2 freshman now out there on the floor for Hawaii. And the point goes to Minnesota. Looks like Annie Mitchum is going to go play on the right now. Sibley will be on the left. Nine of Mitchum's 13 kills have come since the first set, and you'll see her able to. Apply the dump shot there for the point. But time is ticking here for this Rainbow Wahine team fighting for its season. Shorthanded in Minneapolis. Step out. This is Hannah Tapp down the line. First touch Greeley. And Mitchum is just going to bump it over. Outside. Hart caught it fast. 
Was there a touch? No touch. Point for Hawaii. They're within four. The almost invincible Minnesota Gophers make only their ninth hitting error of the night in 109 tries. That's some pretty high percentage volleyball. Kahakai serves. Deep corner. Oh, the setter, Seliger Swenson, tried to catch Hawaii napping to no avail. Mitchum is dug up, though. Here's Wilhite off the block and down. And that's point number 22. Well, Wilhite is so versatile, and Seliger Swenson, just a magnificent setter who puts the ball just in the right spot. I would say about 99% of the time. Extremely accurate. Wilhite with five of her 13 kills here in this third set, trying to close the door on the Rainbow Wahine season. Mitchell. Dug up by Wilhite outside. Here's Hart off the block and down. And Minnesota within two points of finishing this thing off. Dave Shoji, contemplative on the sideline. Trying whatever he could here throughout this match, having to deal with the early injury to his star player. He's called all the right timeouts and certainly give a lot of substance a chance to go in and do their best to bring this Rainbow Wahine back to life. I wonder what is going through the mind of not only Dave Shoji, his coaching staff, the seniors on this team, certainly the bitter disappointment that Nikki Taylor must be dealing with here as we speak. But bitter disappointment, the regret of knowing that this wasn't how it was supposed to be. It wasn't how it was supposed to end. Yes, they're in a tough situation on the road against Minneapolis. Against Minnesota in Minneapolis. And while that was certainly a tough endeavor as Hannah Tapp goes off the block and out, Hawaii was supposed to have been able to put up a better fight and at least have all of their tools and weapons at their disposal. Exactly. So frustrating on so many levels, from the training staff to the coaching staff to the players, all feeling frustration. So aloha ball for the match. Taylor Higgins sets up Maglio, and Emily Maglio, a bright spot for this Hawaii team. That's seven kills for her, and she has yet to commit an error in this sub-regional. It's a pretty amazing number to go errorless in the sub-regional. 19 serving 24 remains Aloha Ball. And Kirsten Sibley will serve. She is part of this Hawaii future, just a freshman. Tap. Was there a touch? Yes, there was. That's a point for Minnesota. And this match is over. This season for the Rainbow Wahine which started out with so much potential and expectation, comes to an abrupt close here at the Sports Pavilion. Ironic, it started out with injuries, Danny Mitchum and Nikki Taylor, and it ended with a, a traumatic injury to Nikki Taylor. Hawaii fans will question the karma out there in women's volleyball, right? Like, how fair was this? for Hawaii to have to experience this on this particular night in the biggest match of the season against the number one team in the country. And boy, were they dealt a difficult hand. Absolutely. Now you begin to think, oh, if they'd been in a different sub-regional with anybody else except the second-ranked team in the, in the tournament, they might have been able to advance in another sub-regional. Hawaii season ends at 23 and 6 overall. Let's go to Scott Robbs. He has Dave Shoji. All right, thanks a lot, Kanawa. Coach, things really changed. Three points into that first set, you lose Nikki Taylor. After that, it was so much, it was just difficult. Well, we just didn't have a backup plan. I mean, uh, you know, she's been our right sider all along, all year, and uh, we tried to mix and match, but uh, we're just not the same team without her. You know, I saw her on crutches. Do you know what her injury is? I, I really don't. Uh, she heard a crack, so I don't know. I mean, obviously we're gonna get some X-rays, but uh, you know, she was uh, she was not good. I mean, I, I went down and uh, she just was in a lot of pain, and so we'll have to see. All right, coach, give us your thoughts on this season and moving forward. 
Well, it's just unfortunate we end like this. Uh, we didn't really show our true colors, and uh, you know the the region itself. I mean, it was uh, it was disappointing, and uh, you know just had a cloud over our head, like you know why are we here and that kind of thing. But I thought our girls were ready, and uh, you know I thought we'd play a really good match tonight, but it just wasn't meant to be, I guess. This isn't going to be our last post-game interview, is it, Dave? Well, you know, I might join you on the sideline. All right. How about that? We'll make room for All right. you. All right. Thanks, okay. Coach. Well, you heard the coach. Who knows? But we'll find out shortly. Back to you guys. Yeah, that was a cryptic response from Dave Shoji, to say the least. Savannah Kahakai and Sarah Wilhite getting our picks for Bank of Hawaii players of the match. Kahakai with 17 digs surpasses the 1,000 career dig plateau. Wilhite, 13 kills, 333, 11 digs. Yet another double-double for her, and she was fantastic, as she has been all year for this Minnesota Golden Gophers team, which now advances, and because of the new rule being utilized here in the NCAA tournament this year, they have the opportunity to host in the regional semifinal and final in the next couple of rounds here in the NCAA tournament. So they're sitting pretty, certainly, as the number two overall seed in the tournament. They really are. This uh, this crowd makes a difference. I can see why they haven't lost in this gymnasium in an over two years. Yeah, the new a rule. Huge no, advantage for them. Yeah, the new rule, no predetermined regional sites here this year in the tournament. So, yeah, Minnesota with an opportunity to go deep into this tournament. But where do we even start, Chris, in trying to digest and summarize what this season has meant in the legacy of Dave Shoji and, of course, the longtime history of Rainbow Wahine Volleyball? You know, it's really hard to, to put it into words, really. Um, you know, the, the senior class of uh, you know, the six girls that, that graduate, um, have been in, remarkable in their in their record that, that they put up, and uh, and it's certainly the the impact of Nikki Taylor winning, you know the, the the Big West Player of the Year twice in a row, four times first team All League, um, you know the AVCA All American twice. You know it's just really hard to put into words how to replace that and where to start yeah. from there. I know Dave shoji has got a good recruiting class as usual. Uh, but, you know, it really, um, there's sort of an empty feeling, I know, amongst yeah. you, both you and me that, that uh, we're, a little, we're still shocked. It's kind of shell-shocked from those first three points when Nikki went down and just changed everything that we had planned on. Yeah, I mean, Dave Shoji sort of embodied that in, in his interview with Scott Robbs there. It was just the feeling of, you know, why us? Yeah. And Hawaii had to endure that really from the beginning of the season. So much hope, so much expectation, and here they were in the biggest match of the season, and they weren't allowed to put their best foot forward. That's going to be something that's going to be difficult to deal with going forward for this team. Yeah, I got, I got the feeling Dave showed you was hinting that the cloud was over us. Well, if they win, they get an easy road to the Final Four. If they if they lose, though, it's like, why us? Why are we putting with Minnesota? Yeah. So it was very kind of an awkward thing all weekend long. 2016 ends with the feeling of what might have been yeah. for this fantastic Rainbow Wahine volleyball team. We've enjoyed it a lot. Chris, I know you still got some work to do in the Thank Heineken postgame show, but it's been a pleasure all season long, my friend. That yes. will do it for us here courtside. Don't forget to stay tuned for the postgame show. But that is it. It's a wrap. It's POW for Hawaii Volleyball in 2016. I'm Kanoa Leahy. For now, we bid you aloha.